Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, a.k.a. Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Choose Send video for this week, for the week of December 31st, 2023 to January 6th, 2024. Hopefully all of you out there had a happy new year, regardless of whether it was with friends or family or if you went out and, you know, celebrated New Year's or anything like that. So hopefully your New Year's was good and hopefully 2024 will turn out to be good for you um, this year, though. Ho hopefully it is for me, too, as well. And we got four stories to cover uh, this week for the new year. Um, and we'll start, uh, the four are basically an uh, issue involving the Xbox version of Baldur's Gate, including a odd ban that seems to be popping up for those who are playing the game and everything like that. Um, CD Projekt Red has responded to basically the idea of basically being purchased or anything like that. Uh, Square Enix's comments made about in regards of AI and all. And of course, an analyst has given their take on what they expect to see in terms of this Switch 2 or Switch successor or whatever it's going to be called or anything um, like that. And if you're interested in where I got source of these informations, links will be in the description of this video. It's for me, you're watching this on YouTube. But before we get started, I like to do what I like to call the quick my two cents. Stories that kind of caught my my attention, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details. The first one is that Hateki Kamara is supposedly will be start looking for a new job in uh, 2024. As you are probably aware, he left Platinum um, last year, um, basically. And some of the some of the claim is that he was sort of conflicted with where the direction Platinum was going and everything like that, though. Um, we'll see what happens and where he he gets hired in terms of in 2024 or if he decides, decides to start his own company or anything like that. Time will ultimately tell though to see what Hadaki Kamara decides um, to do and everything like that. We also learned that apparently there is an official Xbox Series S toaster. Now, I'm sure all of you remember when the X Xbox Series X was shown, there was basically the idea of the joke of, of it looking like a fridge. This allowed the uh, Microsoft to do the Xbox mini fridge and all and sort of a take on the whole joke about the Xbox Series X and now we have one is now they have done this with the Series S and now it is an official toaster with once you push the toast in and when it comes out you'll see the Xbox logo on your toast and everything like that so it, it, it's odd that it exists but I'm sure there's an audience for something um, like that though. Uh, we also learned that the fall, creator of Fallout, Tim Kaine, um, is basically consulting on the upcoming um, Obsidian's game, The Outer Worlds 2, and everything like that. Um, he did play a major role in the first Outer Worlds when that came out, I believe, in 2019. Um, he has since supposedly retired and is doing YouTube. Uh, has done some YouTube videos here and there, but he certainly is helping out in, you know, Obsidian's next game following Evolve, if I'm saying the name correctly, which supposedly is supposed to come out um, this year and everything like that, though. I am very curious to see what he is helping and contributing in terms of the Outer Worlds 2. I did like the first one. I still think it's a very good game, though. I do consider it more like you could call it um, Starfield Light to a certain degree and everything like that. So I am very curious to see how Outer Worlds 2 is going to play. Obviously, we don't have an official release date or any gameplay trailer at this time. So uh, we'll have to wait until we get information on that. But it's nice to see that some of the folks who helped the first one are helping out in the second one in a certain capacity and so forth. Um, we also learned that supposedly the hacker Gary Bowser, who was re who basically has you know faced all the legal issues he has with Nintendo, is that he's not involved in the whole Switch flashcard um, situation. As some of you are aware, supposedly hackers are putting out basically a claim that they have a Switch card where you could put like your micro SD card in it to play you know games off your micro SD card and so forth though he's denying any involvement with this whatsoever but even if he's not involved though um, I'm not surprised if Nintendo basically tries to get involved in some ways or another you know how extremely protective of their IPs and their systems um, they can really be in all. Um, we also learned that Ubisoft has shared some details about their upcoming game Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. Um, they did show off um, what each system will have in terms of frame rate and resolution. Over on the Nintendo Switch side, it does seem, unless something changes or at least if there's something I'm missing, seems to indicate that 
It will run at 60 frames per second, 1080p or 720p. I assume this will be 1080p when docked and 720p when undocked. If that it holds and all, I think that's very impressive. I think that is good and everything like that. It is certainly a game I am keeping an eye out for. And if a demo does come out, which I've been hearing it is, I definitely will give um, the demo um, to try, a try and everything like that. We also learned that apparently a teen uh, basically managed to shatter the Tetris record. Now, supposedly this is the, I think the NES um, Tetris. I think there were two different Tetris games, but I think this one was for, for the official officially from Nintendo, and supposedly he was able to get to be able to so-called beat the game, which is basically reaching a certain level until a certain part until when the game ultimately frees and everything like that. Up to this point, it, the beef is that only like AI or a machine can pull this off. So for the fact that this um, supposedly 13 year old to pull it off, I think that is actually um, very impressive. I that is I have to have to admit that's very impressive for this person at that young age to really um, pull that off. I mean, honestly, I mean I enjoy Tetris. Don't get me wrong, but I'm no no expert or anything. I'm like that. However, apparently there are some that don't agree with this. And apparently um, there was basically a report about basically a anchor on Sky News that was reporting this and then made a comment that it's basically saying for the teen to go outside or everything like that. And well, she got heavily criticized about that comment, especially since she also covered basically how another person was able to win like a dark championship and everything like that. So the comment she made, I think, based on what I've read, kind of rubbed people the wrong way. And I kind of can see why not everybody would be happy with that comment that um, the that's, that's Sky News anchor um, basically um, said and all. And in the movie and TV show part of the My, Quick Might You Sent, we learned that Jack Black has been cast as Steve in supposedly the upcoming um, Minecraft movie. Now, it's going to be very interesting to see how this is going to happen or anything like that. There are reports coming out that this will be a live action. I don't know how this is going to work or anything like that. I mean, I'm not sure what the plot or anything like that. Since Minecraft, I always view it as more like a more like how like how I view Legos in a way, you sort of build stuff out of it and everything like that. So I'm not sure how um, a, mine, a Minecraft um, a movie based off of Minecraft is technically going to um, work or not. But we'll find out. Supposedly, they're aiming for a 2025 um, release date. Maybe we'll see a trailer this year or something like that. So maybe we'll get some sort of idea of what we can expect from the Minecraft movie. But as of right now, Jack Black has been voiced as Steve. I mean, I did like, I did think he did a convincing Bowser in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Maybe he might hit it off with Steve or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And we also learned that basically um, there's been questions about whether the Netflix's Daredevil is considered canon or not though, uh, right? And supposedly, even when asking Marvel, they're still somewhat vague on that question. Basically, they're calling it sort of the scare, sacred timeline or something like that. There's been some debate back and forth whether or not it is because they do mention events from the Avengers and everything like that. Although at the time, Marvel TV and Marvel Studios were kind of split in certain and certain things um, like that before they eventually came back in the fold in part of Marvel and all. Um, we do know that the, I think season one and season two of Daredevil are available right now on Disney Plus and Hulu. Um, part of, you know, like the, um, I think like, you know, the settings for you could set for like the M rated shows and everything like that. So um, remains to be seen. I think it should be canon though. I think it should be part of it, but again, Time will tell whether Marvel will give us an official answer or not. Um, we also have an interesting report of basically um, from The Hollywood Reporter that points out the domestic box office. And it seems that, well, it seems that Universal seemed to have done very well um, domestically um, at the box office and all. And sort of has overtaken um, Disney um, this year, though. Disney, while apparently had some hard time for some of their movies that came out um, this year. I mean, while Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was good and everything like that. Um, stuff like Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which I thought was the best Ant-Man movie out there. Didn't do well at the box office. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which I thought was an improvement over Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. 
that one did not do well at the box office. And of course, you know, the Marvels did not do well um, at the box office too. Although, although Warner Brothers with their DC films also did not do very well at the box office um, either though. So be interesting to see how 2024 um, plays out and everything like that. And last but not least, it has also been reported this week that the domain name for Mickey Mouse and everything like that has now officially begun been public. I mean, from what I understand, from what I read, it's been 95 years and you couldn't really use a Mickey Mouse or, or get permission from Disney to use Mickey Mouse for anything else. And apparently that domain name has now been made available for the public. This has led to basically some very interesting situation that has certainly has popped up ranging from a video game called Infestment 88, which is supposedly going to be on, you know, PC and everything like that, which has a sort of like a horror type of a survival in a way with a with a Mickey Mouse, a disturbing version of Mickey Mouse from Steamboat Willie, basically um, being used to hunt you down to a horror film, which sort of feels like a throwback to, you know, the 90s um, movies, you know, like the Scream franchise. Basically having, you know, some psychopath in an old, like a black and white Mickey Mouse from, you know, again, the classic Steamboat Willie um, a cartoon basically going around um, killing people and everything like that. So it certainly has um, opened the floodgates of a lot of the stuff to pop up. Whether or not Disney decides to respond to this in any way um, remains to be seen at this time. But as of right now, um, Mickey Mouse is now, his domain name has, or at least the Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse has now become public and all. Okay, with the quick my true cent part now done, along with the movie and TV show part, we'll get started with our first story. And this is basically talking about, you know, the Switch 2 or the Switch successor. Now, this, the whole rumors about a Switch Pro or the next Nintendo Switch or anything like that, like that has existed for, let's just say, a very long time. Since the first Nintendo Switch came out back in um, 2017 and everything like that. But as we enter into another year uh, with the Nintendo Switch, it does seem to indicate that we are getting to a point where basically Nintendo may have to be talking about their next system um, soon and everything like that. And there has been some rumblings that have been going on basically um, lately in 2023, particularly near the later half or near near the you know the end of 2023, as there were reports coming out ranging from a behind the doors showing with developers of basically hardware, what they expect the next Nintendo system will be like, with Switch successor or Switch 2, to supposedly having it run on NVIDIA's um, DLSS, to even showing off basically a version of the Matrix trailer, the trailer that was shown used to basically demonstrate Unreal Engine 5 and everything running on this so-called hardware and everything like that. Well, as we now are into 2024, there are folks who are going to make are starting to make their predictions of what they could and could not, what they could expect to see, especially for Nintendo's next system. And one of the experts made a comment on, while being interviewed on GameIndustry.biz, while and other people as well, what kind of what they could expect from Nintendo in terms of with the next iteration of the Nintendo Switch. From an article posted on Video Game Chronicles. It reads that according to um, Catan Games Toto, or I think his name is Doctor, you know, T O T O. The cons- he's talking about the Nintendo, um, talking about the Nintendo Switch by the name of Doctor Sec S E R K N T O, CEO of Tokyo-based industry consultancy Katana Games. Um, basically, in regards of the Switch 2, he had to say, "quote." The console could launch at $400, 100% higher than the Switch launch at, and there's a chance that games could adopt to the $70 pricing of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. It's worth pointing out that I think they think The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, I think that was $70 when that game um, launched. Um, anyway, moving on. It said, the time is finally here for a Switch successor, even though I could say a pro model actually did exist and certain developers were already working on the um, dev kit, Toto wrote. 
Um, again, side note, there was some reports about it that Nintendo supposedly claimed that there was. Nintendo was planning to release a pro version, but it looks like they kind of shelved that or something like that. Oh, anyway, moving on. I believe the next hardware will drop in 2024 for $400. There's a high chance um, the game will cost more to $70 um, price tag. According to the industry um, consultant, Nintendo's next console will again have a portable functionality as VGC reported last year. The next system is also likely to be an iteration rather than a revolution. Nintendo might add some bells and whistles to the device, but it will be similar to the current Switch. And because there is Pokemon, and Pokemon is associated with handheld gaming, there's no way on earth Nintendo will drop the portability feature for their next um, big thing. Now, mind you, this is basically this person's take on the matter. It's not anything official, and nothing has been um, confirmed um, at this time. So it's too early to tell whether what he's saying is true or not. But having said all that, I will say that a lot of it does seem, um, I think, does seem more realistic or something like that. Like, I do believe that, yeah, I do agree to send, I do believe that Nintendo will keep the portability factor. I don't think that they're going to drop that, you know, the console handheld hybrid, though. I think it would be very hard for Nintendo to convince people at this time to say, hey, we have not only console, but also a handheld um, device as well. We have two separate devices. I, I don't think that's going to work that's much um, anymore or anything like that. And yeah, I can see this as more like an... I don't see this as a revolution. I don't think you're going to have the same kind of shock value the way the Nintendo Switch did at the time. I mean, yeah, I do think that there could add some bells and whistles. I do think that the next um, Nintendo's next system, I think, will be more powerful than the current Switch. I could see it being as powerful or even a bit more powerful than the base PS4 or the base Xbox One. I do think it's not out of the realm of possibility. It could be as powerful as, say, an Xbox Series S is. But what I don't expect it to be is it's going to be as powerful as the PS5 or, you know, the Xbox Series X or the rumored PS5 Pro or anything like that. I don't... I don't believe Nintendo will be aiming for that direction. I could be wrong and they could surprise us, but given Nintendo's history and what direction they have gone since, you know, the Wii that launched back in 2006, I don't think they're going to be going into the direction of having the kind of power that the PS5 or the Xbox Series um, X has in any shape or anything like that. As far as the price point goes, um, Maybe on that one, though. I mean, it is possible. I mean, Nintendo is known to have their devices also try to be as affordable as possible or anything like that. Maybe at $400. I'm not sure if that's going to be a stretch or not, though. That might be. Um, as far as the games costing $70, um, again, that is kind of controversial to a certain degree. But on the other hand, Tears of the Kingdom was $70, and that did very well for Nintendo. So... It wouldn't surprise me if, let's say, their next game, their games on the the Switch successor, does cost seventy dollars or anything like that. I know not everyone agrees with that, but it, I wouldn't be um, surprised or anything. As far as anything like DLSS and all, I believe Nintendo will have DLSS in their system. That's where I'm currently leaning right now. As, but do I think it will be the kind of DLSS that we see on like the PC or everything like that in the video shows? I think there may be some differences, though. So, uh, some difference in a way. But I will say, I think some of the stuff this analyst is saying does seem a bit more um, realistic and not um, well out there or anything like that. But anything, but like I said, this is this person's speculation. We won't know until Nintendo officially reveals the system and everything like that. I do think 2024, we'll probably hear about it maybe um maybe sometime before maybe the holidays or something so it's anyone's guess though but i do believe that we'll probably hear more and more about nintendo's next system in 2024 so overall it is this is this one person to analyst and their take on the matter but like i said i do think that i am leaning towards this one being a bit more um realistic and everything like that <clears throat> 
Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to um, part two. And this one has to do with a comment made from Square Enix in regarding um, AI and everything. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my video of um, uh, excuse me of my of my my two cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at Square Enix and a recent comment they made in terms of their New Year's um, resolution in regards of AI and everything like that. Now, um, twenty twenty three for Square Enix was kind of interesting. They've had some some interesting hits, but some myths or everything like that. Obviously, games like um, Forspoken did not go as well as they had hoped for, and that ended up them absorbing Illumination, Illumination, if I'm saying their name correctly, production and everything like that. Final Fantasy 16, depending on who you're asking, some might call it was a hit, some might call it a miss, some may or may not like the direction it was was going or anything like that, though. But either case, there was an audience for that game and all. And they did put out some games like Octopath Traveler 2, which I think is, which I really enjoy and everything like that. And of course, they have also talked about bringing Final Fantasy 14 over to the Xbox systems and everything like that. But there has been times when Square Enix has made um, some questionable decisions ranging from basically the push for blockchains and NFTs, which unfortunately has led to some controversies and some questionable decisions and all, to basically the use of AI. And AI has sort of been a very controversial sub subject and everything like that. We've seen this in terms of one of the issues that led to the writer strike and the actor strike and everything like that. And there are certainly some questions in regards of basically in terms of video game development though. Well, in a New Year's letter, they basically made some comments though that basically sounds like they are doubling down on AI or anything like that. Several articles have brought this up though, but um, this one's from Nintendo. Um, basically in basically from Nintendo Life and this is what part of this supposedly letter in terms of AI said quote we also tend to be aggressive in applying AI and other cutting-edge technology in both our content development and our publishing fun functions in the short term our goal will to be to enhance our development product productivity excuse me and achieve greater sophistication in make in our marketing effort in the long term, we hope to leverage those technologies to create new form of content for consumers as we believe that technology innovation represents business opportunity. Now, in terms of my take on AI, I think there's some arguments for and against it, and I do kind of view it as sort of a double-edged sword to a certain degree. On one hand, I do think AI can be a very useful tool. I think when done correctly, it can offer be used as sort of a um, co-pilot and everything like that have it help with some of the workload for some of the developers and everything um like that so at least help in certain areas that might be very important and everything like that so i think ai can be a helpful tool but on the other hand it does bring up some questions in regards of basically of like in terms of like letting several people go in terms of employment and everything like that to the idea of having ai just you know, come up with an idea for a game and a story and everything like that. Let that AI do it itself, not like have like the human person make it up and everything like that, make up, create a story or anything like that. So it's a very tricky and double-edged kind of situation. And I am a little bit concerned about Square Enix's push to try to implement AI. And I feel like they could end up implementing it in or excuse me, the wrong way and everything like that. Same with the whole issue of blockchains and everything like that. They're certainly doubling down on it, but right now, that's a hard sell at the very moment. Right now, NFTs and blockchains don't have like the greatest reputation um, at this moment and everything like that. So I just get can't help but shake the feeling that Square Enix's use of AI, they're, I have a feeling they're going to use it for the wrong reasons. And I think this can open up a lot, of, open up a whole set of issues in terms of the use of AI um, in particular. So overall, 
I think AI, at least in game development, can be, like I said, I think it's a double-edged sword. I think there are some benefits to it if implemented correctly, but I can see how it could easily be misused and abused um, to a certain degree and how it could also be used for basically um, the wrong reasons and all. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part three and this one has to do with um a comment made by the developing team um cd project red so we'll take a quick break and we will be back and we'll be right back okay and we are back with part three of my my true scent video and for this one we're going to be taking a look at cd project red and an interesting comment they have made now ever since you know cd project ever since cyberpunk 2077 came out back in 2020 cd project red has been sort of working hard to try to rebuild their re reputation and everything like that the game the game launched in a very very bad state and really hit their reputation hard and quite frankly i still stand behind and believe that they absolutely deserve the criticism and backlash because of how cyberpunk 2077 was launched back in 2020. however the game has certainly gotten into a much better shape than when it was when it originally launched though they made some adjustments and changes to it though um the anime cyberpunk edge runner on netflix definitely helped brought attention to cyberpunk 2077 and got i think more people involved and now the game is in a way better state than it was when it originally launched though they also launched the only expansion pack to it um basically um phantom liberty which has done pretty well for cd project red so clearly it took cd project red some time to rebuild their reputation and everything like that but it does seem to indicate that CD Projekt Red is in a much better position than they were in 2020. However, with the push that we have seen in terms of studios or companies buying and acquiring studios and everything like that, there has been some questions wondering if CD Projekt Red would be up for sale or anything like that. And they recently made some comments, including this one on the site Rock Paper Shotgun. And when asked about this question, it said um, basically that they are, have no plans to give up their independence or anything like that. Um, one of the chief strategist officers says, um, basically talked, um, basically before stepping down the road January 1st, dismiss any rumors that the Polish developer might be acquired and that it's just a rumor. Um, he said, um, quote, um, we've always had a clear position support supported by the regu regulations including the sta status this person said referred to the company's countermeasure aim at deterring hostile takeovers we are not being we're not interested in being included in la any large um and in a large entity saying that they want to continue their success being um, um independent and everything like that um but they did make it very this person also did make another interesting statement in regards of them buying studios or anything like that and supposedly this person did not said that they're not shutting down the possibility that cd project red could acquire another company in the future but made clear that any such deal would be done with the aim of getting um what they getting of where they want to be rather than just pumping um profits this author pointed out um hint hint basically um embracer um it's and basically they are saying that they're currently they're also talking about their um they're working on their next um next entry in the witcher series um they're working on their original ip and supposedly you know the sequel to um cyberpunk 2077 I will say that obviously the situation is different with, for CD Projekt Red now than it was like maybe like years ago or anything like that. So the fact that they want to remain independent isn't really that shocking. I mean, it's almost kind of similar to basically um, what we saw with Capcom. I mean, a couple of years ago, there were talks about the possibility of Capcom being purchased because they weren't exactly in a great spot. But given where Capcom is right now and given the success of some of their franchises that they have put out lately, um, it doesn't seem like Capcom's in no hurry to be, you know, acquired or anything like that. So it doesn't seem to be like CD Projekt Red is in that kind of position. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. As far as them buying studios and anything like that, that would be interesting to see what happens if they decide to acquire a studio or an, or anything like that. But it would be also be interesting to see if they would avoid some of the mistakes we saw with um, Embracer Group that started buying up all these studios and everything like that. But after that. Two billion deal fell apart in last year. They ended up having to let go a lot of people and close down a lot of studios and everything like that. So, be kind of interesting to see if should CD Projekt Red decide to buy a studio, if they would avoid the kind of mistakes um, Embracer Group it does or anything, or anything like that. But for now, um, it does seem to indicate that CD Projekt Red is okay where things are. At the moment though so overall doesn't sound like cd project red is for sale anytime soon again things could change down the road um things environment could be a lot different for cd project red everything like that but where they are right now um they are not currently up for sale at this time but it would be very interesting to see should or if cd project red decide to buy a studio or not though <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back, we'll get to our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And this one will have to do with the Xbox version of Baldur's Gate 3. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And this one has to do with Baldur's Gate 3, particularly um, the Xbox version and everything like that. Now, 2023 was definitely good for um, Baldur's Gate 3 in, in general, though. Originally released on the PC um, earlier that year, though, the game really sort of, let's just say, blew up. And I would say, in sort of in a way, kind of similar to what we saw with um, 2022's um, Elden Ring, though. The game eventually would make its way in September to the PS5, before finally making its way to the Xbox Series X and S VI when it was shadow dropped on there following the announcement at the um, Game Awards and everything like that. And the game took a little bit longer to bring to the Xbox system, mostly due to the fact that there was an issue with couch co-op, particularly on the Xbox Series S, before Microsoft decided to tell them that they could remove that for the Series S version and everything like that. Well, recently there has been some, two issues have started to emerge. One started to pop up first before this, the other one I'll be talking about, and that has to do with supposedly there is an issue regarding a save bug that it seems to be erasing people's hours of data in terms of with the um, Xbox Series X and S version of Baldur's Gate 3. Now, I've been playing the game on the Series S, and so far I have yet to run into this bug or anything um, like that. So I don't know how widespread this issue truly is, but it seems to be enough that it is creating a headache for the developers and Microsoft, and they seem to be working into the issue though. But they have also pointed out ways to offer a workaround. And one of the things that um, Lauren Studios, if I'm saying the name correctly, are asking people to create an account. Um, they're saying go to the option menu from the main menu under gameplay, activate cross save, link your Larson and Xbox account. For now on, your last five saves will automatically be uploaded to their server. It's important you do not exit the game before the upload is finished. The upload is finished when the message says sync cloud saving is no longer um, visible. They also point out um, if it firmware bugs occurs, you need to reactivate the cross save functionality in the option screen. This will give you access to the save game that was successfully uploaded though. So it looks like they're still looking into it though. Again, I haven't ran into this problem, but I'm not denying that there could be others that have run into this though. But apparently another issue that seems to have emerged is that some players are getting their Xbox account um, banned. And it seems to be the report seems to indicate that it, this has to do with a issue regarding that some people are using their clip, you know, um, uploading what apparently is what showcasing what what pure Xbox is calling it some naked camp fun time taking place in the games. Basically, you know, you can romance characters and everything 
excuse me, everything like that in Baldur's Gate 3 and all. And apparently one person found themselves banned for a year on Xbox after accidentally uploading um, three clips and everything like that. Well, now apparently the, stu the publishing studio over at Lawrence Studio, according to what Pure Xbox is saying, has responded to the problem, confirming the discussions are being held with Microsoft and the two parties are working to make sure it doesn't keep occurring in the future. This is what they had to say, quote, We've seen the report that some players got banned or otherwise faced issues on Xbox having uploaded screenshots and video for their gameplay content. We're in discussion with Microsoft and we're looking into it, annoying and uncool. Um, in a follow-up response, it was advised that you turn off mature content in the option menu if you want to be extra safe for now. And don't forget, you can deactivate automatic uploads so your clips aren't posted to the um, Xbox servers. So, it, I will admit this is a little bit annoying that this kind of issue is sort of emerging, especially with because of the a certain scene and everything like that, that suddenly you're getting banned to not use certain feature on your Xbox, despite the fact that that scene is actually in the game and everything like that. So, it, it is a little ridiculous to a certain degree, considering that... I mean, Microsoft had no problem with the scene being in the game or anything. So why are you blocking or banning people because of this once of uh, the scene and everything like that? So it seems a little bit dumb and everything um, like that and all. So hopefully this issue will get resolved along with the whole save bug issue um, as well and everything like that. It is really unfortunate that Xbox owners have to deal with this um, situation. I'm just hoping in 2024 they can resolve this um, once and for all. I mean, I'm currently playing Baldur's Gate 3 along with Starfield on my Xbox Series S. I'm enjoying both of this, um, these games and everything like that. So yeah, but I will admit it, it is a bit unfortunate the situation Baldur's Gate 3 on Xbox is facing, at least right now. So overall, I'm hoping in 2024, a lot of these issues can be addressed for Baldur's Gate 3. It, it's something I, I can see why not every Xbox player out there is happy to be um, dealing with. Whether it's this bug issue or this banning issue over a, shall we say, certain scene in Baldur's Gate 3 that's getting them banned for no apparent reason and all. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this concludes this My Two Cent video um, for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about this analyst and claim about prediction for Switch 2 or, you know, this whatever Nintendo's going to be calling it their next system? All? Do you think this analyst is spot on about what they are saying, though? Do you think a lot of this stuff is realistic or believable? Or do you think this person is completely way off in terms of what they're saying about the Nintendo's next system? What are your thoughts about Square Enix and their discussion of using... Um, AI and everything like that. Do you think that Square Enix is spot on in terms of their discussion about AI? Do you think there are benefits to it though? Do you, or do you think there are pitfalls? Or do you think that this, you feel like this is a disaster way to happen? Or you feel like the whole issue with AI has a double-edged sword to the situation though? What are your thoughts about CD Projekt Red and their comment about, you know, being, buy, being bought or anything like that? Do you think they're right to saying that they don't want to be purchased at this time or anything like that? That they want to maintain their independence? Do you think that CD Projekt Red could be purchased at some point down the road? Or do you think they'll remain um, independent? And could you see them maybe buying a studio? And if so, what studio do you think CD Projekt Red could technically buy that they think would you know fit their portfolio and all? And what are your thoughts about the situation with the Boulders Gate 3 um, situation on Xbox? Um, are you running into any of the same bug issues that's been reported out there? And what about this person being banned over uploading a clip from a, let's just say, a scene in Boulders Gate 3? Do you think that's being blown way out of proportion? Do you think it's ridiculous? Do you think that person should not be banned just because the scene is actually in the game and everything? Um, like that and all. Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. 
hate it, and I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal Me, Patreon, or Steam Labs. Links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Soon and all. Um, hopefully I'm trying to do one for maybe trying to do one for tomorrow. If certain issues don't emerge or anything like that. But I hope to see you again next time when I do another video though. But in any case, from Southern California, I wish you all a um, good day then. Bye.